Uh, eh, berapa orang? 40 eh? So, cukup dah? Cukup dah. Semua dah ada eh? Ya, yeah, betul. Okay, so kita mula dengan umur kitab Al-Fatihah. Okay, so come to the uh, So today we're going to, to learn uh, introduction of pediatric abdominal examination. Okay, uh, basically pediatric abdominal examination doesn't differ much compared to adult. Uh, I'm sure you guys uh, learn, I mean done adult abdominal examination. Have you? Yes. Okay, good. Yes. Uh, so the basic principle is applied. Okay, it's always start with inspection, general inspection first, and then followed by inspection, uh, palpation, uh, inspection, palpation, percussion, and auscultation. Okay, uh, the flow is the same. Okay, what's the different is uh, in pediatric examination. Uh, the sign, the sign might not be that obvious, okay? Because a lot of actually a lot of abdominal uh, pathology are chronic pathology. So when we when we talk about chronic disease, uh, it evolves a long time, okay? It, it evolves a long time means uh, some of the presentation might occur later, okay? Even though, for example, chronic liver disease, okay? pediatric in pediatric population we've got, we also got patient with chronic liver disease. Uh, but if your progression is slow, then you will see the the findings later on. So, uh, I mean, the findings like capo medusa, all this portal hypertension, might not be appeared at, at pediatric uh, during pediatric, or it, it may appear but not that obvious. Okay. Uh, besides that, some of the findings, for example, uh, flapping tremor is quite rare lah in pediatric. Uh, you have to perform it, but to get it is quite it's quite rare. Uh, what else? Uh, hmm. Okay. And actually, there's a lot more scar in pediatric abdominal uh, in during the inspection compared to adult because uh, a lot of these children with uh, abdominal pathology uh, they had underwent uh, surgical uh, one or multiple surgery. So in your inspection, you will see more scar in pediatric. So in pediatric abdominal examination, make sure you have to look for scar, for scar and comment on it, okay? Because other signs might not be obvious, no? Okay, so let's let's watch uh, one video, okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good morning, sir. And this is uh, Alex. And I think it's his abdomen that we need to examine this morning, isn't it? So if you're all quite comfortable, then I think we can start. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is just simply observe Alex and just see him sitting on the bed there. And I can see that he looks nice and comfortable, he's alert and he's quite lively. And I can also see that he's a good colour, he's nice and pink. And he doesn't look pale or jaundiced, for example. Um, he's not got any accessory equipment such as drips or medications or anything of that nature. Moving in to look at his hands, if I look at them fairly closely, I can see they're a good colour, they're also nice and pink, they feel nice and warm, and I'm going to do a capillary refill time 
that shows it was, and that was less than two seconds. Okay, so his perfusion is fine. We're then going to assess his hydration and just looking in his mouth. Can I have a little look in there? Stick your tongue out for me. And that looks lovely and moist. <coughs> his eyes look nice and moist and they're not sunken. And if I do um, a skin turga, I can see that that pings back absolutely nicely. So he's very well hydrated. So that concludes my first set of observations. And now I want to look at his tummy. And for that, I need to just lie you down a little bit. Is that OK? If you just lie back. Well done. Here we go. We. All right, then. So can I lift this up a bit? So we just lift this up like that. So we're lifting it up just so that we can see his rib margins there. Is that all right? So, thank you. So, starting my next lot of observations, I can see that his tummy looks nice and flat. It isn't distended. There aren't any scars and it's moving nicely. Thank you. It's moving nicely with respiration, which tells me that his tummy is not hurting at all. I'm next going to do superficial palpation. So, just gently feeling around the tummy, going all the way around, making sure I feel in all nine areas of the abdomen. And what I'm mainly doing here is checking to see if it hurts anywhere. So I'm not really looking at his abdomen, I'm more looking at his face to see if it's tender anywhere. And it certainly doesn't seem to be tender and I can't feel any hard areas or any guarding. So that's fine. After superficial palpation, we go on to deep palpation and I'm starting the right iliac fossa and we palpate gently with each of his respirations moving up towards his liver and uh, ending with your index finger parallel to his rib margin and I can just feel the tip of his liver there which is perfectly normal in a child of his age. Moving back to the right iliac fossa we then move around in the same way um, palpating deeply for his spleen, breathing, uh, feeling in between each of his breaths and again ending up with the index finger parallel to his rib margin. I can't feel a spleen Sometimes a little spleen at the back you can feel by just pulling forward in that way. Uh, but there's still no spleen there and that is absolutely normal. If the liver or spleen were palpable, I would follow this up with percussion, which would help to estimate the size of the enlargement. I'm now going to uh, auscultate his abdomen. And that all sounds fine. We'll just check down in the hernial orifices. And that looks absolutely fine. No sign of any hernias or any lumps and bumps. Normally at this stage, we would also check the external genitalia. But we've all already done that previously on Alex. And we know that everything's fine there. So we don't need to do that today. One final thing. If we were examining uh, a young baby who was in nappies, it would be important to start the abdominal examination with the nappy open right from the start. But with a young man of Alex's age, which is three, it's important to examine it in a sensitive manner so that we open the top area first and then we can see the external genitalia at a later stage. Remember when examining the abdomen, to start with general observations, including the general well-being and colour of the child, note any accessory equipment and note the perfusion and hydration status. Then move on to specific observations of the abdomen, including noting any distension, any masses or scars, and how it moves with respiration. Okay, uh, dengar kan? Can you see, can you uh, see the video clearly kan? Okay, we're going to see another video. <coughs> Assalamualaikum, I'm Dr. Jai Jahangir Abbasi and I'm a senior registrar in pediatrics at Rawalpindi Medical University. Today we are going to do abdominal examination. First step is introduction, consent and proper exposure. Assalamualaikum, my name is Dr. Junaid. I'm going to ask you 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 to ask
ठीक नहीं इन एग्जामिनेशन द फर्स्ट स्टेप इज इंस्पेक्शन सो इंस्पेक्टर डॉमिन फ्रॉम द बैड एंड देन इंस्पेक्ट इट फ्रॉम द फुट एंड look for any visible scars deformity distension note the shape of the blackness and uh, look for any overlying redness oozing rash etc once you have done with the inspection of the abdomen you will do palpation of the abdomen before palpating the abdomen Just rub your hands so that you may not touch with the cold hands. <clears throat> On palpation, first of all, I will do superficial palpation in, in an S-shaped manner. Then I will do deep shape palpation in an S-shaped manner. While doing the palpation, I will look into the eyes of the patient and I will make sure that there is. I can note if there is any tenderness or something like that. I will come to the level of the patient. I will look into the eyes and I will do the superficial palpation. Then I will do the deep palpation, and I will try to find out whether there is a mass present or not, or Is there any distension or tenderness anywhere in the whole of the bone? Once I have done with this palpation, I will go check the visceral muscle. First of all, the hepatic muscle. I need to check the size of the liver. How much it is below the lower costal margin? I need to see whether the edges are well-defined or ill-defined. Whether it is smooth or rough or firm. Whether it is soft or firm. Whether it is tender. Or not, and then I have to take the total span of the liver. For total span, I will start by cutting from the second cross space, and I will come down. The point where I get the dullness, I will note that point, and from that point to the point. Where I got the lower margin of the liver, I will measure the span of the liver. So this is the total span of the liver. After checking the cutting area, I will start palpating the spleen. And the palpation of the spleen starts from the right iliac fossa, then I will go towards the left iliac fossa. During palpation, I will again look into the eyes. Patient to see is there any tenderness. Once I will feel the lower border of the spleen, I will again measure the spleen. And I will look how much it is below the left costal margin, and then I will check the surface of the spleen is it smooth or firm. I will palpate for the splenic notch, and I will make sure that I can't get above the border of the spleen. Because when it is splenomegaly, you can't go above the border of the spleen. So once I've done the spleen, then I will palpate the kidneys by manually. I will put one hand below. The kidney, and the, and the other hand, I will palpate the kidney. I will palpate both the kidneys. 
then I will check for the SITs. In order to check the SITs, I will start pelvic, uh, start progressing below, from below the ZV sternum. Once I reach to the right side or maybe the left side, I will ask the patient to go in left lateral position. I will wait for a few seconds so that the excited water may go to the other side and then I will percuss it again. So if the now, after making the patient to the left lateral position, the sounds get more pronounced, more prominent, that means that they, the shifting dullness is positive. There was fluid in the right side, when I made the patient turn to the left side, the fluid went to the left side and the sound become more prominent. The sound of percussion now becomes more prominent, that means that the side. Shifting the list is positive, this is present. <clears throat> now you may also check the thrill. However, the shifting the list and thrill may not be present at the same time. But in order to complete the steps of examination, check for the thrill also. Ask the patient to place one hand right in the middle of the abdomen, place your other hand over there. And then do a splash like movement and with this hand, with the palm of this hand, you will feel the fluid thrill. <clears throat> but if you will be present, then there is massive distension, then there is massive surprise. So after checking the fluid thrill, now I am going to focus and check the blade. First of all, palpate the blood with this movement coming from above, do like this. Feel the edges and borders of blood. Then percuss the blood. So if the blood is distended, percussion note will become dull. After checking the blood, <coughs> Look for neural orifices, look, look for the, any genital abnormalities. Ask the patient to place the hand on the mouth and do a cough. With a cascicolo, cascicolo. When he coughs, look for the neural orifices. <clears throat> then also examine the mother lymph nodes as this is as part of relevant examination. Then auscultate the abdomen. Once you have done the uh, percussion and palpation, auscultate the abdomen. Auscultate the hepatic area for the hepatic brewery and both the renal areas for the renal brewery. And then auscultate for the presence of bowel sores. Once you have done the auscultation of the abdomen, you need to see the other relevant examination pertinent to abdomen. Like go downwards and look for edema. Just for a few seconds at both the middle melodies and look for edema. Look at the hands for any carnitia, pallor or clubbing. You may check the VCG scar and then look at the eyes for jaundice and anemia also. And then you may, if you get the moral lymph nodes enlarged, then it is also relevant to 
check the cervical and the axillary flows and then look at the spine ask the patient to turn look at the spine the sacral edema and then <clears throat> cover the patient and say thank you so much okay so it's simple right so you've got two different uh two different videos and both has their own uh i mean advantage and disadvantage and so uh weakness and wait, hold on okay okay so basically uh in abdominal examination the same principle apply so it's inspection general inspection close inspection uh palpation percussion and also finally escalation okay but <clears throat> there are a few things that is very important in pediatric abdominal examination and first your approach <clears throat> you have to approach the pediatric patients with gentle okay with gentle try to be friendly okay be friendly be approachable and be gentle okay do not cause pain because once you cause pain in pediatric they won't they won't cooperate and you will fail <clears throat> okay and then usually we start from the farthest to nearest can so start from general inspection so what are you inspecting for okay, let's start with the no shafatin so what you have to invest what you have to inspect for Uh, first of all, we look at the general appearance of the uh, children. Okay, what um, what general appearance? Like uh, his body build, his uh, condition, whether he is uh, breathing hard, okay. and or uh, or uh, uh, for abdominal examination or general inspection. General inspection. Oh, from general. Um, so um, we look uh, what the patient, sorry for the sound, mm -hmm. uh, we look at uh, what uh, the children is doing, meaning that uh, because uh, activity of the patient uh, can indicate severity. Okay. Uh, whether uh, he is conscious, uh, his appearance, whether he looks pale, uh, take it in, and any dysmorphic features. Or uh, are there any uh, uh, equipment like okay, uh, wearing okay. a yoga suit? Okay, good. Okay, uh, I can stop oh, you there. Okay. Okay. okay so, <laughs> okay, good. That's very good. Okay. So, in general, what you have to look at first is the growth. Okay. In pediatric, growth is very important. So, look at the growth. Look at the habitus. What? How is the habit, uh, body habitus? Are they fat? Are they calcaceic? Are they short for age? You can actually say, it. uh, but be careful. If the mother is around, then you have to be careful. Okay, watch out for what you're saying. Okay, don't say, oh, this morphic child, or uh, syndromic child. So that word uh has to be, I mean, it has to be politically correct. I mean, it has to be. You have to watch out what you're saying because you are talking to to the mother, right? So, but you have to you have to describe the body habitus. Okay, uh, the child look, uh look short for the age okay the la the child look uh obese or look cacaxi and, and then the face the face can be this you can describe the face looks the child looks alert or does he looks encephalopathic hyper alertness okay sometimes the patient with encephalopathic they look very alert but they they look like hyper alert they like staring but they are not alert to the surrounding so this is what we call the hyper alert. They are they they are staring, but they they are not alert. Uh, this is a sign of encephalopathy, kan? So you have to say uh, responding, uh, look orientated, and then okay. So growth, and then the alertness, okay, the alertness, and then you have you you need to also watch, uh, look for uh, just no growth. Look for jaundice. Things are obvious, lah. Like jaundice. Obviously, jaundice, kita. So you mentioned uh, the child doesn't look jaundice, look pink, can pink. Uh, actually, in pediatric, there's a term we call it cherubic faces. Okay, 
cherubic faces ni uh, is actually they look plump, they look plump uh, they look like kushingoid lah, they look kushingoid macam plump looking face uh, look flushing so we, this is what we call cherubic, cherubic faces okay, cherubic faces is a sign of gross hormone deficiency and also it's a sign of kushing lah, kushingoid uh, okay, what else? Uh, that's in general and then look at the surrounding, you rightly mentioned, look at the surrounding for any equipment. So what sort of what sort of equipment do you expect a child with uh, abdominal pathology would have? Uh, hold on, hold on. Okay, sorry. Uh, okay, so that's what you have to comment, lah. You have to comment. Uh, by the way, in your exam, you have to call. You have to do like running commentaries, or you comment at the end. In your exam. Both can. Both can. Eh? Uh, so it's up to you. To be honest, I I think I I'm more comfortable with running commentaries because you won't. If not, you will forget. Uh, if you do summary at the end, you you usually forget. Uh, the findings, hein? so usually I do running commentaries now. So, uh, general inspection basically that's the main uh, jaundice, okay, jaundice, and then uh, things that are obvious, kind things are obvious look pelo, uh, okay, pelo, jaundice, young obviously, and then equipment you've mentioned that again, rice tube, kind rice tube, look for pack tube, button, kind button, pack tube, rice tube, and then what else, and so abdominal exam, that in. I think that's all really, that's all. Okay. Uh, okay, next, Amir is one. Okay, what else? After general inspection, you, you go to the patient. Okay, you go to the patient and then you expose the patient. Okay. However, you have to make sure the setting is correct. Okay, in the abdominal examination, the bed has to be flat. Okay, it has to be flat and you have to sit. Uh, patient should be at your eye level. You have to sit down. You have to sit down and make sure the patient is at your eye level, okay? Uh, so that's when you do palpation, it has to be, you palpate at your eye level. Okay, so what are you inspecting? Uh, okay, what, what is the next step after general inspection? What, what is the next step? Um, to the uh, specific abdomen examination. Okay, uh, okay, for, for abdomen examination, do you go to abdomen first or do you go elsewhere first? Sorry, sorry, doctor? Do you straight inspect the abdomen or do you inspect somewhere else? You completed the general inspection. Okay. Now you're approaching the patient. So usually, okay, usually, it can be, it depends, it depends. Sometimes, uh, for example, in my undergraduates, uh, the question is always, okay, uh, look at this patient and examine the abdomen. So you look at the patient, give a brief, uh, give a description, I mean do general inspection and then straight go to abdomen. After you complete the abdomen, then only you go to the hand. Okay, but sometimes uh, they don't give that uh, in instruction. So you can actually, it's up to you. But the, actually the best way is actually from far to, to close hand. So start from general inspection, then approach the hand first. I think I, I would prefer that approach. Okay, so I mean, so what are you looking at? Uh, what what are you inspecting at at the hand? Uh, at hands, uh, we look for uh, the 
uh, capillary refill time. Okay, and good. Then, uh, look for any clubbing. Okay. Uh, and then uh, look for any um, uh, look for uh, pulse, radial pulse. Mm -hmm. And then and look, um, look for any features of uh, infecting endocarditis. Why, why, why do you have to look for IE? Um, because this is abdomen, yeah, this is abdominal examination. So, you talk, kalau you mention, oh, there's no splinter hemorrhage, there's no uh, uh, genuine lesion ke benda that IE punya tinggi kan, then it shows that you are not thinking lah. I mean, if you got time, you can mention it, but it, it, just, it just shows that you are actually just memorizing the script. <laughs> okay, so you have to be focused lah, focus on what might be the pos possible um, abdominal pathology. Okay, so okay. what else you want to look at? What else you want to look? I must look at? Mm. at the hand. Um, uh, any, any muscle wasting? Okay, especially where? At the interossi, interosseous and hypotena and tina muscle. Yes, tina and hypotena muscle, good. Mm. You should look at the nail, kan? You should look, look at the nail. Because nutrition, nutrition status is part of abdominal examination. Okay, okay. so patient with nutritional deficient, they've got uh, colonicia, they've got uh, bagi kat they've got, you know, the white thing apa? Leukonikia kan? Leukonikia, kolonikia uh, and then uh, uh, tu lah the main things and then you you can actually describe the hand whether the hand is look thin thin uh, compared to the habitus kan? nampak macam dia kushing ngot lah, kushing ngot macam orange on stick kan? nampak macam thin hand, thin, very thin hand uh with no muscle bark, poor muscle bark. You can look at just look at the muscle and then you can say oh there's a uh, minimal muscle bark. Or the one fat there's no there's no fat. Uh, so you can actually describe uh the nutritional status now. Okay later then you can go to the face can okay go to the face what are you looking at at the face more Pfizer is up what are you commenting on the face Look, look at the eyes of the children. Uh, okay. Look for any congenital failure or sclerosis. Okay, good. And then, uh, uh, inspect the mouth. Okay, good. Look, uh, is there any? Um, Angular stomatitis. Okay. Hydration status, right? I forgot to mention about hydration status. So you, uh, you need to feel the hand, whether is it sweaty, ke, is it warm, uh, the skin tegel, is it okay? And then at the mouth, uh, you have to look at the tongue, lah, for the tongue, ke, the hydration status. Eh? Okay, okay, what else? Uh, okay. Uh, I think your friend mentioned about syndromic features, can? Oh, yes. What sort of syndromic features and you you are looking for in abdominal examination? Uh, thalassemia. Thalassemia, kan? So, uh, okay, thalassemia, the most common, uh, definitely will come out in, in your exam, kan? So, yeah. how the faces of thalassemic patient? Uh, frontal bursting, mesolary yes, prominence. Good. Okay. Mm. They've got like chick monk face, kan? but you don't mention chick monk face. Okay, don't mention chick monk face. Okay, it's very insulting. Okay, tapi you you describe the face. Okay, look, mention and okay, there's no frontal bossing. Okay, there's no prominent cheekbone. Okay, and then uh, some syndrome, you know, sometimes like this is quite tricky, lah. But in pediatric post, there's a lot of genetic disease. Things like back with edemone. Uh, back with edemone, uh, they occasionally get present in your abdominal exam. Uh, they've got tongue large tongue kan, mm. obviously macam macro, macro glossia uh, or they've got uh, alert child for example, triangular face uh, these are like uh, 
like some specific point that can give you extra points lah if you mention but in general the most important is is what you mentioned lah the thalassemic phases the frontal bossing because this is the most common that you can encounter in your uh, abdominal examination okay lagi uh, okay lepas abdomen eh lepas muka then you can go straight to the abdomen expose the child make sure you have communication with the child actually the 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 videos just now is not the communication is quite is is quite limited especially the the mat, the guy lah the gentleman uh you have to communicate with the with the boy okay with the child okay so go to the abdomen okay expose the abdomen make sure the patient lie flat okay at your eye level okay if i'm what are you what shall you inspect when you look at the abdomen uh, I would like to uh, inspect for abdominal distension. Okay, good. And look for any scars at the abdomen. Okay. Any umbilicals inverted or expected? Mm, okay. Any skin lesion, rashes, pigmentation? Mm. And then spider nevi or dilated vein. Okay, good. Okay, about the scar, where do you want to look at the scar? Where, where do you want to look for scarring on the abdomen? Which which part of the abdomen? Hmm. So I've got pictures of scars, but I don't know if it's a paper slide. Uh, you can look at the scar, okay, especially at the costal margin, costal margin bawah. At the end costal margin, you should look at look for scar at that area. Okay, uh, rooftop scar, Mercedes, uh, Mercedes scar, and then you've got a few other scars. Uh, I think what you can do now is you can just jot down. I am going to uh, name few type of scars, and then your homework is you have to uh, you have to identify the scar. I mean, search internet what is the scar is, what the scar, uh, what is the scar for, and also what is the, how, how the scar looks like. Okay, first you've got rooftop scar. Okay, so rooftop scar is a scar at the, it across your subcostal margin. Okay, it's a rooftop. Okay, this is the largest scar lah, you can see in, on your, on your abdomen. Okay, and then you can, uh, you can have midline laparotomy scar, okay, midline laparotomy scar, which is for laparotomy lah. And then you, also, you can also get, uh, have paramedian scar, okay, paramedian, right and left paramedian scar. And then you can have kosher subcostal incision, kosher, K-O-C-H-E-R. Is it the right or left? Kosher, K-O-C-H-E-R. And then you can have upper abdomen midline incision. Okay, upper abdomen midline incision is similar, almost similar to your laparotomy scar midline, but this one is just upper abdomen, just short midline scar. And then you can have Mercedes Benz extension. Okay, Mercedes Benz scar. Okay, Mercedes Benz scar is actually rooftop scar, but with uh with extension at the uh, superior superior part, extension to the thoracic. Then you can have also transverse upper abdominal incision. Okay, and then you can have you can have right upper transverse incision. And the the other most common is you can have the McBurney McBurney scar. Okay, McBurney scar for appendicitis appendicitis appendic 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 and then also you can look at for lateral thoracolumbar scar. Okay, lateral thoracolumbar scar is higher up. You may need to expose up to the nipple. Uh, make sure you expose patient up to nipple lah, from nipple line down to the uh, pubic area lah. Okay, because if not you will miss the lateral thoracolumbar scar. And then you've got inverted J scar. And then you can have sub umbilical okay or umbilical scar okay make sure you explore the umbilical so that's where you miss the scar because a lot of scar in pediatric 
are at the umbilical level. For example, for those with gastrocesis, omphalocyl, kan? Okay, uh, exomphalos. And then, uh, finally, the other important scar is the groin scar. They look at the groin. But you expose the groin later. After you ex finish examining the, the abdomen, then only you expose the groin. Look at the groin. For scar. For hernia. Lah. Okay. okay. After that, you should, uh, you should comment on the shape of the abdomen. Okay, is it distended? Is it a uh, scaphoid abdomen? So scaphoid abdomen. Anyone? I don't know, scaphoid abdomen. Yes, it's like sampan, sampan. Ah, good, good. Okay. So what cause scaphoid abdomen? Kenapa dia dapat jadi scaphoid? Malnourish. Uh, malnourish, they don't, they, they, yeah, they can get lah, tapi maybe kat Afrika dapat lah kot, Malaysia mungkin tak ada. Kalau kat kat sik, dapat? Macam mana? Kat kat sik? Kat kat sik, you can get. Kat kat sik. Malaysia banyak je kat kat sik. Kalau you pergi Kelantan tu ada je kat kat sik. Uh, even orang asli banyak lah kat kat sik. Uh, so I, I, I was trained in Kelantan, so you got a lot of patient yang kat kat sik lah. Uh, a lot of this patient is actually because of chronic disease. And tapi usually scaphoid abdomen is most importantly in your needs. Huh? In your needs is very important, scaphoid abdomen. Because it's a sign that the abdominal content has be, has shifted. Okay, has shifted elsewhere. Uh, yang biasanya has shifted upwards lah to the thoracic. Uh, contoh macam congenital diaphragmatic hernia kan? Congenital diaphragmatic hernia atau dos yang memang dah operation. Contoh splenectomy uh, ataupun Uh, biasanya itulah dos yang uh, kalau ada some rare disease macam pentalogy of cantrell benda macam tu lah which is you tak yeah, I don't think you'll, you, you'll meet any of this lah. I've made one tapi because the abdomen uh, abdominal hernia I've, I've met uh, actually not one lah. I've met two or three uh, patient where the abdominal content is actually herniated outside so they've got very scaphoid abdomen The scaphoid abdomen, uh, when you and all the content is actually down at the at the at the what you call it, the inguinal area, at the pubic area, no? so it's covered with the with the the punya pants, oh. so when you throw the book out the pants, it's actually there's a mess down there. But it's actually the stom the stomach or the abdominal content is actually uh, herniated down. So they they've got a very scaphoid abdomen, okay. Uh, it's rare, but you can have this. I've met few. Okay, uh, so what else? Uh, Restitution got inspection. And then you can inspect just like a dog lah. Because if you've men you should mention about, uh, besides the skull, you should mention about capo medusa. Kalau ada bruises, okay. May, they may not have capo medusa, but, but they may have bruises. Okay, bruises, ecchymosis. Uh, contoh patient yang ada pancreatitis ke kan? Uh, atau dose yang ada hemophilia, yang ada bleeding. So you should look for uh, bruises. Okay, what else? Uh, okay, now we can move to palpation. Uh, Ifa mawada, let's get tadi. Ifa Ifa mawada. So what do you have to palpate? How do you palpate? Mm, palpate first. Ah, uh, night palpation. To nine quadrant of the abdomen. Okay. You can use the approach of the man. I, I would prefer that approach. Use the S shape. Okay, use the S shape. But make sure you warm your hand first. Okay. Warm your hand first. And uh, make sure you palpate. Not by... You use your whole palm though. Use the whole palm. Use your hand to palpate. Okay, not using your... Uh, what you call this? Your phalanges. Okay, nanti I just turn on my video lah. Okay. So, you don't use, don't do this. Nampak, tempat bilik ni gelap sikit. Don't do this. But rather, do like this. Okay. So, palpate. With your, the whole of palm, the whole surface of the palm. Okay. 
sometimes it's very difficult because especially in small child kan tapi try not to press using your the tip of your finger especially the tip because it's painful okay don't cause harm to the to the child okay uh, so like preparation kan at nine quadrants what do you look for and remember do this at the at your eye level okay do not stand and do this because if you stand chances are you will press using your the tip of your finger okay so uh make sure you you sit at the level of the child after you in, you uh put up the bench <coughs> okay lepas tu you palpate last uh superficial palpation so what what the the examiner mentioned just now both examiner mentioned the same thing where 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 are you looking at when you palpate the abdomen face yeah, okay. Okay. Huh? face okay i'm using okay face can look at the face for sign of pain kan Okay, and then uh, just palpation is actually superficial palpation is for pain. Okay, then followed by deep palpation. Okay, deep palpation. How do you do deep palpation, Ahmad Zaki? <coughs> deep palpation. Hmm. Uh. In a dark, you pakai dua tangan kan? I believe uh, your the teaching is in adult you pakai dua tangan. In pediatric you don't have to use dua tangan. Guna satu je. Okay, guna satu. And you palpate you palpate the whole nine quadrant juga. Okay. So what is the aim of deep palpation? Ini ini palpable masses. Okay, palpable masses. Okay, okay. So uh, what, uh, what is the possible masses in pediatric? Uh, Hepatomegaly boleh? Okay, hepatomegaly lagi. Organomegaly lah. Organomegaly. Hepato, spinomegaly, nephromegaly kan? Kidney. Lagi apa lagi? Yang more common than that. Yang you kena comment on. Apa lagi benda keras yang ada kat perut you? Hat. Uh. Hard stool and you can rasa for evidence of constipation. Okay, constipation is very important in pediatric. It may not be important in adult, but in pediatric is very important. Okay, you can you can actually have uh, abdominal exam for pediatric constipation. Maybe the child got hirsprung at the functional constipation uh, or just this elimination syndrome. So basically, you have to palpate for presence of hard stool. Okay, and then puppet for hepatomegaly. Just look at the technique in the video. Okay, first hepato for hepatomegaly, you puppet from the right iliac fossa upwards, can upwards parallel to the to the costal margin. Okay, parallel to costal margin. Okay, okay. So just puppet and make sure you puppet using the border of your hand. Okay, make sure you use this part. The number. Yeah, body of the hand. This one. Don't use the tip of your hand, of your finger. Use the border, the lateral border of your, of your index finger. Okay. Go down following the breathing. Lah. Okay. Inhalation and exhalation. Okay. Once you touch, once you feel the border, then you move along the border. Okay. To determine whether is it the heart, the liver is globally uh globally enlarged or is it only segmental of the liver Se only part, part of the seg segmental of the liver is enlarged okay because if it is globally enlarged then this is a this is a global hepatomegaly lah okay tapi kalau dia macam only part of the liver is enlarged then possible this is cirrhosis or i mean not cirrhosis cirrhosis dah kecil kan uh possible there's a mass lah hepato hepatoblastoma ke or any infiltration okay and then you have to determine whether is it smooth, comment whether is it smooth, firm, hard, stony, rough, or you can feel like uh, grumpy, uh, like uh, grumpy, uh, rough, lah, rough or smooth. You have to comment on that. Okay. And also, uh, 
while doing that you have you have to also comment on the pain kan is the patient in uh, any presence of tenderness and patient presence of guarding okay in pediatric murphy sign is not that common lah. you won't get murphy sign in your exam it's very it's very uncommon lah murphy sign not common uh apa lagi sign yang selalu you guys guna for the adult Murphy sign. Murphy sign lah yang common kan kalau adult. Gold, gold stone kan. Gold stone can occur in pediatric, uh, especially in thalassemia, they can get gold stone. Uh, in sickle cell, kalau you fortunate to get sickle cell, uh, then you get gold stone. Okay, then puppet for the spleen. Okay, once you feel the border of the liver, okay, then you have to you have to measure. Okay, measure from at the end of the border, the lower border, until the mid clavicular line, right mid clavicular line. Okay, measure that uh, the size. Okay, that is sufficient. Actually, that is sufficient. Okay, unless you can actually use that, you you can actually use that to see whether is it hepatomegaly or not. However, sometimes they can get like push down liver and the liver can be pushed down because of instead of liver pathology is because of because of patient got uh, pulmonary pathology and lung pathology where the lung is over expanded and the diaphragm push the liver down that's why you need to palpate for percuss for the liver span okay so how to percuss for the liver span Aziz Saifullah <coughs> So how to press a liver span? First, uh, we need to uh, start from above, means from the rib cage, uh, go downward. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yes. Uh, and and before that, uh, we need to palpate from uh, right iliac fossa region mm -hmm. and palpate upward. And mm -hmm. once we feel that there's the resistance on our uh, on our edge of our finger, edge of our palm, then uh, we start put, uh, then we ask the patient to, or uh, ask the patient to put the finger there, and then we focus from uh, up, downwards uh, at the ribs, and then uh, when we found dullness, and then we start to measure the liver span. Okay, good. Okay, so uh, you focus, okay, good, good. So you focus at, at the right, middle clavicular line okay at the right middle clavicular line from the second intercostal space so find the second intercostal space okay find the sternal notch then go to the right okay feel the second intercostal space and then percuss okay percuss the in the intercostal space now you don't percuss on the lips you percuss on the intercostal space okay until you uh, reach the dullness level okay then from there you measure the span between that and until the lower border of the liver. So what is the normal uh, liver span? Anyone? Hmm. Um, 9 to 12. Okay, 9 to 12 is a bit, it's big lah. Actually 12 to that will be, uh, usually it's 6 to 8 or 6 to 9. All the children can get, can usually like, Children young, the the teenagers, fifteen, fourteen, they can get up to nine lah. But usually it's between six to nine or six to eight. Okay, and in pediatric, uh, children, uh, by the age of four, you should not pulp, you should not be able to palpate the liver. But before that, you can palpate the liver. So liver, uh. I mean, liver hepatomegaly of 2 cm is still common for up up to two years old. So, in children about two years old, you can still feel the liver 2 cm under under the below the costal margin. Okay, okay. Then you palpate the spleen. Uh, similarly, palpate the spleen. Uh, for 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 the spleen for the spleen, you start from the right leg fossa, but move upward towards the uh, left hypochondriac. Hypochondriac area. Okay, feel for spinomegaly. So any spinomegaly is pathological. Okay, you should not feel the spleen. Okay, spinomegaly is pathological. 
Okay, and then you to confirm if you cannot palpate the spleen because sometimes the, the spleen can actually be pushed up. It can be pushed up or because spleen is actually it's actually retroperitoneal, kan? Part of the spleen is retroperitoneal. It's behind the stomach. Okay, so sometimes splenomegaly, it push upwards. So it push the stomach away. So usually, if you percuss uh, your the lower border, the lower the lower part of your left thoracic uh, cavity, it should it should be resonance because there's a stomach there. But sometimes if you got splenomegaly, it will push the stomach away. So rather than you feel uh, resonance, you can percuss and you can uh, you can hurt a dull a dull percussion. Okay, this is what we call the trap space. So anyone know what, where is the trap space? Where is the border of the trap space? City Sarah Sofina, Sor Sofina. What is the border of your trap space? Uh, at the um, eight, nine, ten ribs, intercostal space. Eight, nine, ten. Eh? Six to eight. It's, I think I think it's six to eight lah. It's six to eight. The upper body is six. Okay, upper body is six. So you percuss. So you start to percuss at mid clavicular line, uh, second intercostal space. You percuss until you get the sixth intercostal space, and then you percuss downward. Okay, if you feel if if there's dullness between the six uh, till the lower border, then you can say the, there is a dullness at the trap space. Okay, it can be splenomegaly or it can be other thing. For example. Uh, full stomach lah, kalau you baru makan banyak kan, then definitely your stomach will be dull kan uh, full with solid uh, or maybe it's just the spleen being pushed up for whatever reason okay, it might not be the splenomegaly tapi one of the cause of uh, dullness at the trap space is splenomegaly okay, uh, next is have, uh, you can palpate for the kidneys belot for the kidneys the same as a dog, just below, just push one of your hand, push the kidney up, uh, below the kidney, while the, the other hand fell for the kidney at the, at the, at the, at the abdomen. Okay, faham tak? Yang ni susah, yang ni, yang ni kena tunjuk lah kalau nak cerita memang susah lah yang ni. Okay, next, what else you have to palpate is, uh, you have to palpate for, Hernia kan, for hernia, for hernia and also for limb nodes. So palpation of the inguinal, you can do it without exposing the inguinal area. So just ask permission from the kids and from the mother and then uh, put your hand at the inguinal area and palpate for hernia. You can ask the child to cough. The child uh, old enough, then ask them to cough. So feel for pulsation uh, at the inguinal area. Okay. And then after that, you uh, ask it. I will take what you want to ask it. Mm, ask it for renal bruit. Okay, good. Bilateral renal bruit. And also for bowel sound. Okay, and then for bowel sound. Okay, so bowel sound you have to comment now. What is it? Bowel sound, berapa lama nak ask it? Mm, five seconds. Five. One minute. One minute. Okay. One minute eh. Mm. Usually at least 10 second lah. I, I, to be honest, I tak tahu berapa lama. Tapi I cuma ask it for 10 second. Because you need to list, to hear at least one, one power sound in 10 second. Okay, so to, to say that it's active. If more than one, more than two is considered hyperactive lah. Kalau in 10 second you cannot hear anything, then uh, it's like it's sluggish. Okay. Okay. Uh, I guess it's better you check. I'm not sure, but I think it's 10 seconds. Okay, lepas tu apa lagi? Actually, you can ask the by using your stethoscope, you can actually measure the liver span. You can actually determine the splenomegaly, uh, hepatomegaly and splenomegaly. This is a technique what we, that we call scratch test. I learned this in my undergrad. Uh, actually, my consultant who he's, he's the one who who, who name and create uh, and establish the scratch test. Uh, so in scratch test, what you do is you put the bell, okay, the bell, the 
the diaphragm pun boleh. The diaphragm of your stethoscope on top of your the last uh, lip course kan the, the last lips and then you scratch you scratch the abdomen from the right iliac fossa upwards along the uh, right mid clavicular line so if you detect once you detect the diff, uh, rapid difference in the in the sound in the transmitted sound kan then that means that's the border of the liver because liver is solid eh Liver is solid and solid transmits sound better than air or fluid. So once you reach the liver, you can you can hear there's a rapid difference in the in the intensity of the sound. Then you can confidently say that is the border of the of the liver. So do uh, spleen. So for spleen, put the diaphragm at the left uh, mid clavicular line at the at the at the lowest ribs at the bottom ribs and then you move up from right leg fossa up to the uh, left hypochondriac area scratch just scratch bukan guna pukul tau scratch dengan jari okay just just macam mana buat doktor macam tulah i tak ada stethoscop lah sekarang ni uh, macam ni jap eh So imagine, imagine this is my diaphragm lah, diaphragm of my stethoscope kan. Uh, and this is your abdominal, this is your lip. Okay, your lips, uh, right lips kan. Okay, so just put the diaphragm of your of your stethoscope on top of the last lips, the bottom lips, uh, the 12 lips kan, at the mid clavicular line uh, area. And then from the right leg fossa, you just scratch quiz the quiz with the tip of your finger just scratch and you can hear the sound you can but you can hear the sound vividly vividly you can hear the sound there's sound of scratching but once you touch the liver because your bell will be touching the liver now because the bell will you have to you have to firmly lah firmly press uh, on the abdomen uh, abdominal wall because the liver will actually touch the bone and the bone will actually touch the and the diaphragm will touch the bone and the bone will touch the liver so it will transmit the sound so once you scratch the liver border you will be able to detect a sudden uh, difference in the intensity of the sound of the scratching sound so that is where the liver border is from now from when tak faham tak jelas sangat alamak uh, mana? Kau tu tadi patient ke? Mana ada patient sekarang ni? Kau ada budak-budak dalam ward? Uh, nantilah, why not bila bila you guys masuk ward nanti you, you jumpa I. Ah, uh, Bila you bila you guys masuk ward nanti you you jumpa I. Boleh tak? So Boleh kalau ada budak-budak pun macam nak tunjuk susah So I, I'm using computer at the moment so Rasa macam susah sikit. Okay later lah later. Later nanti I ajar you guys. It's very simple. You can, I think you can just Google scratch test. I think that is there in the in the internet. Scratch test uh, to to identify to detect uh, hepatosplenomegaly. Okay, okay. Yang tu lah. And then uh, after that, you can expose the inguinal area. Look for uh, hernia, <coughs> direct and indirect hernia. <coughs> And then look at the genitals. Okay, look at the genitals. Is there any ambiguity of the genitals? Uh, look at the scrotum. This is part of the uh, abdominal examination. Lah. Okay, I think to you put. Okay, finally, then at the end you have to conclude. Okay, so from my examination, uh, I've examined blah 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 blah. Uh, so from general inspection, Ali looks uh, well hydrated looks the body build is normal uh with normal well hydrated with normal habitus he doesn't look jaundice he looks uh he was warm and pink uh, there's no sign of john uh, there's no jaundice there's no anemia and the nutrition status seems to be okay uh, the one the nutrition status uh, looks adequate okay so inspection of the abdomen uh there is scar at the blah 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 blah, blah. might suggest uh, might suggest Uh, previous operation for apa 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 okay uh, and then there's no other stigmata there's no stigmata of chronic liver disease 
okay the or there's no stigmata of uh chronic uh disease uh such as uh thalassemia for example from the face there's no stigmata of uh thalassemia or chronic uh, liver disease again macamla okay lepas tu uh inspection palpation i can feel for i can there is no hepatosplenomegaly or you just can say there's no organomegaly palpable uh from the palpation uh there's no mass there's no uh hard stool okay. and then uh pasal pergi and then ascitation you will no renal bruit and there's active bowel sound okay uh the examination of the inguinal okay there's no hernia found there's no scar uh, there's no masses macam tu okay and then the inguinal looks normal uh and then i would like to complete my examination by okay apa yang apa yang you can examine yang related to your to your abdominal examination pr pr examination okay i would like to do pr examination good lagi lymph node assessment lymph node assessment good good okay lymph node assessment at the neck at the as cervical at the axillary kan okay lagi i would like to assess external genitalia external genitalia okay good lagi I would like to confirm the growth by plotting the child height, weight and head circumference kalau dia kecil lagi lah head circumference on a proper growth chart. Okay, confirm. And then I would like to further assess the nutritional status. Okay. By uh, for example checking the uh head circumference uh, looking at the uh apa tu batok look for the gluteal Westing, ha, macam tu lah. Kalau you mention lagi bagus lah. Kalau tak, you just mention nutrition status. <coughs> okay. <coughs> okay, faham tak? Faham. Okay, so tak? Nah, definitely PE you kena belajar by practical lah. Tapi ni teori tak apa lah. Okay, ada soalan? Apa Zudin? Nak soalan Apa Zudin? No doktor. Okay, no one else ada soalan? Ah oh, doktor, saya ada soalan. Ha, ah. ah, siapa yang tanya? Ah uh, patient ah uh, duduk si perempuan ni eh. kalau kita cakap nak examine external genitalia. Hmm. Dia apa saya? Macam ni, macam ni. Macam kalau patient tu dah kecil lagi kalau kita examine external genitalia kita boleh check uh, macam di sini testis ke Hmm. Kalau patient perempuan macam mana? Kalau patient perempuan, you nak kena tengok ni lah. You kena tengok dia punya ambiguous genitalia. Ambiguous. Look for ambiguous genitalia. Look for sign of early puberty kan. Kalau contoh dia ada precocious puberty. Then you boleh mention ada contoh ada pubic hair. Then that's very important. So these are all abdominal pathology eh. Because remember, you've got your adrenal in your abdomen. So adrenal is, adrenal is abdominal pathology. So this is caused by adrenal. Kalau adrenal uh, insufficiency, then you get the cons lah, the cons disease semua tu kan. Kalau over adrenal kan, adrenal hyperplasia, then you get uh, hyperplasia and hypoplasia. You can also both get uh, nasi AH lah, macam CAH ataupun congenital adrenal hypoplasia. So you get all this uh, realization woman lah. Uh, girl with realization so girl with testis uh, girl with girl girl with pen, with penis lah Ma apa macro macro clitoris kan macro clitoris clitoromegaly clitoromegaly so that's what uh, so look at for ambiguous genitalia okay uh, similarly because adrenal is in the abdomen so sign of pushing you have to look for striae kan uh, i forgot to mention striae striae you can see striae especially patient yang chronic disease uh, patient contoh nephrotic syndrome kan nephrotic syndrome they are on they are on steroid kan so you boleh comment on Cushing okay ada presence of Cushing ke uh, ada thinning of the skin kalau patient yang ESRF kan atau chronic CKD uh, advanced CKD you can see uh, orange tinging orange tinge 
uh, skin kan sign off hyperimia okey faham okey anything else okey kau tak ada uh, okey lah tu saja dulu kot next time when you guys around in the in the what then remind me to, to to show you how to do scratch test and also um maybe we can do a proper lah proper abdominal examination okay then that's all uh, okay lah kita tangguh dengan tasbih kafar dan semua tulus okay so welcome to live berkatu assalamualaikum thank you doctor Okay, no worry. Okay, wait. Let's go. Thank you, Dr. Salam.